The PL Show is brought to you by Kel Chaco, Kel 360, and Kel Kids Toothpaste. Hello there. You're welcome to the PL Show. My name is Kemini Amano, but it's not about me today. The woman we're about to meet, she's a philanthropist, she's a gender advocate, she's a youth advocate, and she's a nurse by profession. How she juggles all of that, I don't know, but we'll find out in a bit. Come on now, Fadila. Fadila Fuseini <laughs> is my guest today Mwah. on the PL Show. Now, remember that the PL Show is brought to you by the Kel Toothpaste brand, Kel Chaco, Kel 360, and Kel Kids. How are you, Fadila? I'm very great. How are you too? I'm good, and I can't wait for us to have the conversation, <laughs> and I'm glad to hear that you're good. <laughs> yeah. um, Ramadan Mubarak, is that correct? Yes, you're right. <laughs> Absolutely. We'll talk more about Ramadan. Okay. We'll talk also about the good things you have been doing up okay. north. Yeah. And you should remember that my costume is by Red Cotton. My makeup is by the African American Beauty Academy at Spa. They also did the beautiful makeup for Fadila here. You look wonderful, by the yeah, way. Thank you so much. Um, I look great as well. Oh, thank you. You're so kind with your words. When we come back, <laughs> we'll talk to Fadila some more. Don't go away. Mommy. Michelle, ah, fe fe ah. Hmm. <laughs> Different era, better result. Time has changed, and time has brought Kel Chaco toothpaste, healthy gums, anti-cavity, fresher breath, and it whitens teeth. Kel Chaco Toothpaste, Sankofa, Yenchi, Kel Chaco Toothpaste, Happy Smile. This advert is FDA approved. Welcome back to the Kel Toothpaste PL Show. My guest today is Fadila Fuseini. Fadila, you're welcome to the program. Thank you so much. <laughs> We're just about to learn more about you. So you start the conversation. Who is Fadila? Okay, um, thank you so much for having me here today. Um, Fadila is a young lady coming from the north, um, born and raised bred in Tamale, into a family of three wives and nine kids. I started my uh, primary school in Tamale, Lamashigu Primary School, and then I further on went to uh, Lamashigu Junior High School, mm. and then went to an Islamic school in Tamale as well, and then I did my certificate in nursing in Tamale, and currently doing my BSc in nursing at uh, University for Development Studies in Tamale again. Oh, yes. I, I like I like the, your um, <laughs> affinity and connection with Tamale. But we'll yeah. get deeper into that. Okay. Um, you, you grew up there. You grew up with your parents. Talk to us a bit about your family and what growing up was like. I happen to be the second born of my dad okay. and the first born of my mother because my senior brother passed on. Okay. So I didn't even grow up knowing him. Mm. And um, I'm living with my two stepmothers and that of my father. My mother too is staying not far away from where we are staying. Mm -hmm. And then I have a, a sibling, a sister who is next to me, and then a last brother, Mubarak, who is also in the secondary school in his final year. I see. So I could say that it was a large family? Yes, it was a large family. Well, what would you say some of the uh, fondest memories of growing up are? I would say not really good, but somehow good because uh, my parents parted ways when I was in primary school. So growing up hasn't been easy, especially coming from where I am coming from. Mm -hmm. And um, it's been quite a challenge, but um, if you have good people around you, there are things you overlook and you don't even see them as a challenge, but mm -hmm. see them as opportunities okay. to grow. And so when you say that uh, it wasn't easy, it's been challenging, what does that mean? Explain that. <laughs> what made it okay. uneasy and challenging? Every young person or every child would always want to be around the mother mm -hmm. growing up because there is this experience that it feels good to be around a mother who would always be a shoulder when you need a shoulder. 
who would always be a best friend when you need her around to talk to her. So having said this, me growing up without my mom around, it, it wasn't easy because I had to become an adult at that tender stage because I always had to be my own best friend to consult myself, to talk to myself right. and to also nature my own self to grow. Mm, I can imagine. So because uh, you, you had become the first child yeah. because the first one had passed away. Right. I see. So being the first child now, you had the younger ones looking up to you. Right. You probably became like a sister mom. Yes. <laughs> what, was, what were those periods like when you have... Everyone, you are the oldest. You need to behave a certain way. Yes. What was those? So, what were those um, times like? it's it's the experience is quite good because I could say that it prepared me towards adulthood. Mm. I became a mother at a tender stage where I had to take care of my little sister and that of my siblings. Right. And I also serve as a role model mm -hmm. to my siblings because you being the first child, you have to live an exemplary life sure for nice. them to also um, take up something good. So it was always me working 24-7 to make sure that things goes right. Because at some point that you are, you are so vulnerable, that is the stages where you are not able to provide some basic needs for yourself. Yes. People see that as an opportunity and they take advantage of you. You know, like you have just said, uh, when things are tough on you, it's also the time that you are really vulnerable and people could take advantage of the situation and of you. Right. So what would you say that uh, kept you grounded uh, not to go to that extent? I would say my parents. Mm -hmm. And then also I had some good people around my house and in my community mm -hmm. that I was always looking up to. So at that stage, my challenges became a lot of opportunities for me. Okay. Though it wasn't easy because there are instances you have to starve yourself for these. So I used to fast frequently because I wanted to be up and doing. And then I also wanted to actually head towards the direction I wanted to head to. Mm. So it was quite not easy, but God has always been a pillar. And that direction is and that what direction. I, I, I want us to talk about. <laughs> yes, <laughs> that direction is what okay. I want us to talk about uh, when we come back. But what I, I would like us to do now is to take a look at how this oak, beautiful oak that we see now, began as a seed. Here's the seed to oak segment. We see you playing your um, sister mom role with your little sister. What, what were you two doing in the first? Place? What were you two doing in the first place over there? <laughs> I had a very stubborn sister. Right. Do you yes. remember what you you were doing? No, actually, you don't. That's yeah. a long time ago. It's, yeah. <laughs> but that's that. Those are really beautiful. Um, life pictures that we've seen from you now remember that the seed to oak segment is brought to you by kel kiss toothpaste now brushing your kids teeth sometimes could be a very difficult task due to resistance because of the taste of the toothpaste you're giving your children right now so if you want uh, the resistance to stop make sure you're using the kel kiss toothpaste which is strawberry flavored and it gives the children the perfect taste and makes them develop a personal attitude and love of brushing their teeth always. Remember that Kel Kids toothpaste will protect your child's gum, it will prevent cavity and make their teeth strong and healthy with freshness all day. Now the Kel Kids toothpaste brand is suitable for children two to six years old. It's FDA approved and you can rely on this quality. Uh, Kel Kids Happy Smile. Still with me here is uh, Fadila Fusseini. You told us that you're you're studying nursing right now. Yes. Why did you choose to go into nursing? Nursing has been a childhood dream because um, when I was a child, I was admitted in one of our hospitals and for quite a long time. So when I was discharged, I, I was limping because of the injections I was taking. So it took me months to recover. And it was quite a challenge for me because walking from my home to school was, was a huge challenge. So um, I just thought that I want to, to, to save lives. Uh, 
because of what I went through as a child and because of how I see people suffering around. And I just decided that I wanted to be a nurse. But my mother actually wanted me to be a journalist because anytime she watches TV and she sees young ladies on sets, she's always like, I want you to sit here someday Amazing. so that people too can watch you. But along the line, I realized that I, it wasn't for me. Mm. Though I could do, but it wasn't for me. I just wanted to save lives. You have been doing that for some time now, even before you ventured into nursing, if I'm yeah. correct. Now, so at what point in your life did you begin your philanthropy, your advocacy, and all that? When I was in primary school, mm -hmm. at that stage, that was a time my parents parted ways. And it was quite um, a difficult moment for me. And at that point, I saw other young people of my age that could walk to school without shoes. Some would even come to school without trousers or even just come to school without even wearing uniform. So from that stage, I started walking to houses to collect used clothing and then give it out to people who were in need of it. So the whole thing started when I was in primary. At that young age? At that young stage, yes. What gave you the courage to be able to do that? Where do you think you found it from? <laughs> I would say from my mother. Because at, at, you know, at primary school level, yeah. I'll probably be thinking about food yes. or watching TV mm. or doing something fun. But you went out to help people. Yes. What was it that, about your mother that made you, you know, get, have that courage to go out and do that? She's the type that loves to give whatever she has. Even if she has to give it to people and then will be seated having nothing. So I would say that I drew that inspiration from her. And the period that I was supposed to be with her more, that was the time I was parted from her. Mm. So I just wanted to continue the good works that she was doing. Was it easy for people to trust you enough to give you the things that you asked for for others? Yes, I would say that anybody who is coming from the North or he's a Nordner um, can testify to what I'm, I'm just about to say. We don't need anything to believe or have trust in someone. You can walk randomly to a house and ask for food and they'll give you without even knowing you. So really? at that stage, yes, people trusted in me. And probably I could say that maybe from the home I was coming from and to those who knew my mother and that of my dad. So they had that confidence in me to give it to me. Let's take a look at a 360 video of Fadila's life. Uh, perhaps we'll learn a bit more about Fadila. There comes a time in every season where leaders are born to help society out of a challenge and Fadila Fuseini is certainly one of those people who stand out of the lot to serve, to help and to dedicate their lives in making other lives better. She creates access for people to reach their highest potential especially for children and women within her community and beyond. For over a decade, she has spent her life as a gender activist, philanthropist, youth advocate, and assisting women and children in impoverished communities. That's amazing <laughs> stuff you're doing over there. Thank so, you. And, and that's your foundation, Tiyumba Foundation. Yes, please. What does Tiyumba mean? Let's love them. Oh, amazing. <laughs> and in just one word. Yes. And you're loving them by doing what you're doing. Yes. What is some of the information you pass on to the young girls regarding teenage pregnancy? Usually um, from some of the communities, mm -hmm. it's, it's common to see a girl within some certain ages that either she's supposed to be in school mm -hmm or a training center to learn something. And then at that stage, the child is, is crippled. If I say crippled, the child is being impregnated. Or some of them even get pregnant and they try aborting it mm -hmm. through the illegal way, not going reporting themselves to the hospital. So I was just taking them through the importance of having something to do. If you don't have a formal education, then it's good you have a skill training. Mm -hmm so that at, at least you can have something doing and at the end of the month you can provide your basic needs like sanitary pad which is a huge challenge in some of the communities a lot of young girls have been taking advantage of because they cannot buy um, sanitary pad and i would say that menstruation is not something that you would choose to go through it's a mandatory thing whether you like it or not 
at the end of the month, yeah. you would experience it. So I would say that sanitary part has actually caused a lot of problems. So we are soliciting and we are appealing to government and also other organizations to reach out to these young people to also take the tax off the sanitary part so that it can be affordable for everyone to afford. The work of the foundation is not only on teenage pregnancy. Yeah. So speak to us more about the spectrum of the job you do. Timbaho Foundation um, is currently um, focusing on three of the sustainable development goals that is health, education, and girls and women empowerment. And uh, currently we are running a project by Plan International Ghana, and uh, we are focusing on SRHR among young people within the schools, training centers, and also um, at the community levels. Okay. Timbaho Foundation, it's basically a charitable organization because that was the initial idea, just to reach out to young people, children who are in need, widows, mm. and then orphans, because uh, we do provide these people um, learning materials, foodstuffs, and even um, attend to people in the prison. So that was just um, something that we started initially. But along the line, we realized that Tiumba has grown beyond what we're just focusing on. So we had to venture into other parts of the sustainable development goals. Right. So right now we are doing nine out of the 17. Mm. And currently we are focusing on three. Okay, which, or, which three? Which Education, three women and uh, girls and women empowerment, and that of health. Okay, and how's that going so far? Um, everything is going on well. Mm. I would say, alhamdulillah, everything is mm. going on well. What are some of the challenges, would you say, come with what you do? Funding is the biggest challenge. You have the idea, but you don't have the logistics or the material to implement the idea. Mm -hmm. And that would mean that um, what you have seen or what you want to work on cannot be achievable because you don't have the, the right materials to do it. Mm -hmm. And then also um, we do uh, pay for hospital bills of people with critical conditions. You come to see the person, you know what the person is going through. And you know the only way you can help the person out is money. Mm -hmm. And you can't do anything about it. I see. So how, how many communities do you serve in Northern region? Northern region, we serve more than uh, 30 communities. You mentioned um, a moment ago that your foundation is now focused on three of the SDGs, education, women and children and health. Now, you have given us a bit of the health, so let's talk about education. What is the focus in, in education? What are the challenges in these areas that you're helping with? With the education, what we do is that um, we look out for young people who have been able to um, successfully pass but are not being able to, due to financial um, um, incapability, we try to intervene by um, paying for their school fees or some of them even seeing them through the education. And then also education is a key weapon that I think every child should not be denied of that human right mm. because education itself it's a way of empowerment. Once you get a child educated, it's easy for the child to easily know what is wrong and what is right and also explore with that to get other good things going on. Mm. So with the education, we do a lot and then we donate a lot of learning materials okay. to young people, especially in the rural communities. And we also do collaborate with other organizations to send a reading clinic and then also um, just to get them learning materials like uh, books for them to be reading in their libraries mm -hmm. and what every time to time go to visit them and educate them on the importance of being in school and then pursuing education. Oh, I see. Mm. So what would you say is your most inf impactful project right now? The plant project has actually impacted a lot of lives. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the original thing summit I talked about mm. is also something that is very impactful because um, anytime we do it, we try to read back to the students, to some of them who have um, written their contacts in our attendance sheet. And some of the schools, we have a um, collapse within the school. So we do visit them to know how impactful it has been. And then such people ha have now become ambassadors and they also try to educate their other colleagues within the schools. So I will say that the Regional Things Summit and some other projects we've run have been quite very impactful. Mm. And then also um, paying of the bills because some of them I would say that currently they have their own works going on. Mm -hmm. 
and they have also been able to employ other young people to take them through the training. So I would say that most of the projects we have run has been quite very impactful. You've yes. spoken nicely about the, you know, the work the foundation does. But you haven't mentioned the award that you won, uh, <laughs> the humanitarian <laughs> award. Talk to us about that award and how important it is to you and to the work that you do. I would say that uh, that award has actually been a wake-up call. Not only that one, there has been other awards I've received within the North, and this one just came recently. Mm. So I would say it's a wake-up call to me to still put in my best to ensure that the impact of the little thing we are doing in our societies are actually being helpful to young people. So I would say that it's been very great, and I would say that it's a challenge to me. And I've actually accepted that challenge to give in more. You're watching the Carol Toothpaste PL show. We'll be right back with more from Fadila Fuseni. Don't go away. Hello, my friends. My name is Kel Kate Toothpaste. Wow. I was made to be gentle on your gum, but protected. I will protect your teeth from cavity, make your teeth whiter, stronger, keep your mouth fresh all day. And best of all, I'm strawberry flavored. So put on a smile and try me. That's amazing. Just try me. That's my job. If you say so, jump on my brush. Make your teeth stronger. Chicky, chicky, whiter. Chicky, chicky, stronger. Yay! I'm glad you like your new toothpaste. Don't forget to brush both day and night. Girl Kids, happy smile. Welcome back to the Kel Toothpaste PL Show. We are here on my favorite segment of the program because that's when I get to surprise my guests, the very first surprise that I give them. Fadila, are you ready for my surprise? Yes. <laughs> So my guest today is Fadila Fuseni. She's a student nurse, but more importantly, she is the executive director for the Tiumba Hope Foundation, doing great stuff in the northern region for over 5,000 women and girls in across 30 uh, communities over there. Fadila, you're, you're doing good stuff, really yeah. awesome <laughs> stuff. Yeah, Thank you. I am proud of you. Thank you. What's the one thing that you will not pay for because you can do by yourself? <laughs> <laughs> one thing I will not pay for because I can do by myself? Yes. <laughs> do I even know? I mean, <laughs> let me yes. give you a hint. How about your makeup? Oh, my makeup, yes. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I you got, got you. me, yeah. yes. <laughs> mm. As for makeup, I'm actually not really a fan of makeup, okay. but occasionally I try to touch my, just use something to touch my face so that I can just look as beautiful as you are. Ah, uh, no, you're beautiful <laughs> with or without it. Mm -hmm. Now, let's take a look at the DIY segment. The DIY segment is brought to you by the Kel Charcoal Toothpaste brand. Hello, welcome to my DIY segment. So I'm going to take you through a casual makeup I have in a day when my makeup artist is not around. So first of all, I have to take my wipe and take out all dead particles. I take my moisturizer, take my pencil, and then draw my brows. The next thing I'll do is to take my two shades concealer. I take my beauty blender to blend under the brows. My skin shade foundation. So I have to um, blend it. I'm applying my powder. The so next is my eyeshadow and then I have to um, blend it in a circular way. Skin shade powder my mascara to brush my eyelashes so i'm taking my brush to line up with my lips i love it i want my lip gloss it? to blend i am actually a fan of lip gloss i love lip gloss so much because it keeps my lips so moisturized we can see that <laughs> we, we can see that i'm sure 
if you had your way you'll be telling them give me some lip gloss right now <laughs> yeah i do have your surprise ready now and um girls if you're ready here is for dealer for you do you know who they are <laughs> I work with them. I <laughs> and see. They're my team members. Mm, and then the my little sister there. Oh, 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 she is your little <laughs> yes. sister. Yes. Mm, I see. Was she the one in the photo? In the picture, yes. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So, girls, yes, Fadila. What do you have to say to Fadila? One thing I love about you is that you are so caring, loving, kind, and you are always upright and uptight and doing your best, and you are always doing what you think is always best and yeah. you are never given up we love, love you, you. Love you. Uh, amazing <laughs> amazing you're hearing these young ones who obviously look up to you and 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 they are excited about how upright in their words you are and how great of a big sister you are uh, what does it feel like hearing these <laughs> these words it it's it feels um good Mm. It feels good. Um, <laughs> I don't know. I'm even lost of words. I wasn't actually <laughs> expecting this. But it feels good. Um, because uh, one thing I believe in is nurturing people, mm -hmm. working with the younger ones, giving them the experience. Mm -hmm. But not just picking those who have the experience. But I believe in picking those who doesn't have the experience, give them the experience, and let them explore in their own space. So it feels good. And I'm just wishing them the best of luck. I know there's one thing they wouldn't say about me. That is, I stress them a lot when it comes to work. <laughs> so that is one thing I know they will not mention. Girls, but is that true? <laughs> she says she stresses you a lot. Yeah. You know, that one has become the norm. norm. So it's the new normal. So it's okay. 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 And so at the end of the day, if your goals are achieved, you know, you, you forget about all the stress. So we don't even see it. As yeah. <laughs> oh, awesome. Listen, you girls should come and join my team when you're when you no longer want to, because <laughs> because I'd like to I'd like a, a team that can stand and withstand pressure, right? I mean yes. that's that's the whole point. Yes. Thank you so much, girls, for joining us here on the PL show. Thank you so much. Stay safe and come back home. They're asking you to hurry up and come back home. <laughs> Adila. Um, yes. Amazing stuff. Thank you so much for you. sharing your girls also with us. <laughs> we are happy to meet them. We are happy to talk to them. What do you think the future looks like for Fadila? I see the future to be very bright because um, there is nothing on this earth that you be doing, especially on a good course, that there is no hope in. Once you are doing something that has to do with impacting and touching lives, mm -hmm. giving life back to the helpless, there is always a good way. Indeed. I don't know what the future holds, but I know something better and bigger than myself and the organization is coming. And we pray yes. that it does come and come quickly. I told yeah. you we have something else for you. We're giving you this <laughs> wow. package. We are saying thank you. You and the girls, do you have some <laughs> okay. kids at home? Um, are, are there children in your household right now? Yes, plenty. Okay, then we've got cow kids for them also. Thank oh, you so thank much you. For, for coming on the field. <laughs> thank you so much. Great things yeah, thank you. you. I really appreciate it. Uh, no, we should be appreciating you for all that you're doing. I just want to remind our viewers that uh, the DIY segment is brought to you by Kel Charcoal Toothpaste. If you're looking to have the benefits of charcoal and uh, the benefits of plants like planting, you remember when we used to blend the two and, and brush our teeth with it because of the uh, amazing benefits of uh, the plant uh, and the charcoal. Now you have all that, all those benefits in Kel Charcoal Toothpaste, or whiten your teeth. Uh, freshen your breath all day, uh, protect you from cavity. Uh, check out Kel Charcoal Toothpaste. Uh, it's FDA approved and you can rely on the quality. Did you ever try that? Yes, I have used it once. You've used Kel Charcoal? Yes. Or you tried the, you know, the raw charcoal in there? No, 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 no. I've used Kel Charcoal. <laughs> Okay, thank you. So you're not new to our brand. Yes. Um, we're giving you more to go and use, but we've got something else for you, which I will work on now. Um, <laughs> here we are. So I'll have you stand for this one. 
<laughs> All right, we're giving you this one. Oh, we thank want you, you to keep it in your office so that wow. when the girls walk in there, they see <laughs> that you have been on the PL show. Oh, and I learned something that a queen in Dagbani yes. is Napa. Yes, you and got so, it right. Yes, we are giving you the special one as, wow. a, as you know, as an honorary Napa. <laughs> okay. So now, when tell your younger sister now, she can't call you <laughs> Sister Fadila. <laughs> She has to call you Napa -a for dealer. <laughs> okay, um, thank keep you so it there. much. Let the girls see that you have been here. Let wow. us inspire them some more. Wow. So that they can achieve great things like you have. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank I you. I really appreciate it. We thank also you. appreciate you. You may take your seat now. Wow. <laughs> so, um, we've had a really great conversation. Is there anything else you'd like to um, say to people out there, people in your community who may be watching you right now? perhaps find themselves in, in the same situation that you did while okay. growing up. I just want to say that we are in the festive season. That is the month of Ramadan, and uh, we are still reaching out to our widows, poor widows, and we are calling on people to support because uh, last year we reached out to uh, 2,000 people, mm. both the widows and the orphans, and this year when they submitted the list, it's been so crazy. So we are soliciting to people out there to um, actually support us, anything whether in kind or in cash, use clothing or foodstuffs, you can just place a call to us and we'll pick it up wherever you are. And um, the last thing I have to say is that I just want to say that um, young people should not give up in trying. Mm. Nothing has gotten so easy in life. If you want to get something easy, then be rest assured that things will not go the right way. And poverty is common. You can taste it, you can feel it, you can see it. But don't leverage on that. Don't base on that. There is that power in you as a young person that when you go out with the mentality that you want to achieve, definitely God is going to be on your side. We've had such a fantastic conversation. And to all our Muslim viewers out there, um, we wish you Ramadan Mubarak. Uh, what happens really during the Ramadan? Does anything extra happen with your foundation? Um, yes. For the foundation, what we do is that we give out food to widows and orphans, oh. and then also the beggars on the streets. So from the beginning of the Ramadan till the end of the Ramadan, we give out food. When it's in the um, Salah Idil Fitr, what we do is that we cook packed food over 5,000, mm. and then we visit the orphanages within Tamale, within Northern region, okay. to give them the food together okay. with drinks and then biscuits. Mm. And then we also give the beggars on the streets uh, in town and then Abu Abu. So these have been our beneficiaries I see. All right. and we've been very supportive to them. If you'd like to support uh, the Tiyumba Hope Foundation, you can uh, reach out to them via the contact information uh, scrolling at the bottom of your screen right now. But that'll be all for this episode of the Kel Toothpaste PL Show. If you missed it, remember you can catch a playback on our YouTube channel. Search the PL Show and you'll find us. Remember that the PL Show is brought to you by the Kel Toothpaste brands, Kel Kiss, Kel 360, and Kel Charcoal Toothpaste. Kel Happy Smile. My makeup is by the African American Beauty Academy and Spa. And my name is Kemini Amano. Bye bye for now. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,